Hey everyone, welcome to Pencil vs. Pixel. My name is Caesar, and I'm your host. And today I have the pleasure of being joined by Dan Matutina, designer and illustrator. Joining me today, straight from the Philippines, it's such a long, long way from here. Dan, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me here. Man, thanks for joining us. This is awesome. So a little bit about Dan. He is a designer and illustrator, and he's also the co-founder of the uh, design studio Plus 63 Design Company. He's worked with clients such as ESPN, Wired Magazine, Coca-Cola, uh, The Wall Street Journal, among many, many others. He was also recently awarded the Art Directors Club Young Guns Award in 2013. Uh, Dan, so before we continue, pencil or pixel? Pencil. Ooh, all right, I like yeah. that, I like that. Do you start a lot of your yeah. uh, projects with pencil or? Yeah, because I'm, I actually spend a lot of time doing the sketches for ideas more than spending a lot of time on the computer. I mean, I finish everything. I do all my work on the computer, but usually starts with pencil. So I never really start doing work in front of the computer. It's most, I always start working on pencil. Very cool. Very cool. I love it. Dan, I've given a little background about uh, what you do, but um, we want to get to know you a bit better. What's your, what's your story? Um, currently, I... I sort of call myself a designer and illustrator, so I, I do a lot of illustration work on the side, but I also have a design studio. I work with three other studio mates, so I mostly do graphic design work, identity for different clients. So the thing is, most of the illustration work I do, it's kind of freelance in nature, so most of my clients are, are not from here, mostly from abroad, but for design work, uh, I guess 80%, 90% of our clients are are from here in the Philippines and I think we need that because especially for design you need to interact with clients a lot you need to talk and discuss whereas for illustration I think being uh, out of country or overseas is okay because you can you know it's just mostly like illustrating things based on brief from client so you said, did you say that 80 percent of your clients are in the Philippines for design work for design uh, for grabbing them but for illustration work i guess most of it is from abroad like we're about around the, around uh, the world yeah mostly i guess in the us and in the uk some are in in other parts of europe but generally it's yeah it's the us and uk awesome awesome so um we'll we'll talk a little bit more about about um you know your work uh, abroad and even local uh but Wanted to ask you: Did you always want to do design or be a designer? Um, good question. I when when I was in high school, I was mostly into. I mean, in grade school and high school, I was. Uh, I did a lot of drawing on the side, making comics and doodling on our walls. And but, I guess my main focus at that time was mostly in science, because I went into, uh, grade school and high school with focus on like science and engineering and technology, but. But when I was in fourth year, in fourth year high school, I, I decided I wanted to try a course in fine arts and arts, and totally left field. But I think I, I read in a magazine about this local comic book artist who did some stuff from Marvel, and, and I look at his like CV. It was written there that he went into fine arts school. So that's actually the time when. When I found out there's a course for fine arts, is I never really, I just thought drawing was like a hobby for most people, and especially going growing up in the province, we don't really have an exposure to like arts. I mean, you can see art, but you don't have uh, like a exposure in design or illustration or comic book stuff. So it was it was all new to me, and then I research about it, and then ah okay, so there's a course for that, and so I took up a visual communication course and. In college, so I guess even before I was interested in art, but I never really knew if it was design or illustration. But this was just something visual, something that involves drawing. And when when I went to university, that's when I found out that there are they have there are, there are categories. There's advertising, there's graphic design, there's illustration, there's motion design, web design, all these things. So I learned most of those in back in college. So what was the, uh, what was your, did you change majors? Not really. When I went to college, I, I went into visual communication because I think 
that was the one closest to advertising. I had to explain to my parents that there's future in I don't know, there's future in arts because the course in the university was you either go to industrial design or visual communication or studio arts, which is painting or sculpture. So I guess the most commercial one was uh, visual communication, which is very much kind of inclined to advertising. So I guess by doing by choosing that, my parents sort of under, understood that there's a bit of future in him in, in the arts. Did you um, you, you did, did your parents have to have to approve before you decided to to jump into that? Mm, well, it was a long discussion, I think, because here <laughs> in the Philippines, especially in the province, it's it's very conservative. So you either become a doctor, an engineer, a nurse, or a, a lawyer or an accountant. So those are just the main courses you can pick. But I was, I, I don't know, I was a bit hard-headed. I, I just thought, yeah, I'll just try doing something for like visual arts or fine arts and see how it, how it works. My other choices my other choices, of course, in college was either chemistry or like computer science. So it was mostly science, but yeah, I decided to like just push through with uh, uh, arts. Yeah. So if it were science, let's say you decided to go to science, right? Um, yeah. What what part of what would you want to study in science? I, I was I really like chemistry, so it was either chemistry or computer science, either either of those. You know the reason I ask because um, I, you know a lot of your a lot of your work is very uh, geometric, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know for some reason I I see the correlation you know science and 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 your artwork. Um, I could I could sort of see that you know I mean you like uh, you know a lot of your things are uh, like I said geometric but also like um, spaceships and those kind of things you know it seems like you're really yeah. attracted to that. Is that maybe because yeah. of the science background? Yeah, or? I think so. I, 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 there is. I don't know if it's 100% that, but even when I was young, I, I was into like really reading into science encyclopedias and science books, and most of those books are still at home back in the province, and those are really old books. Some of the older ones that I've been reading were books from books of my grandparents when they were still living and when they were still alive, but yeah, it was mostly that, I was reading a lot of books about science, and of course, when I, I think everyone grew up wanting to go to outer space and become an astronaut, and I guess I was I was one of those people. And <laughs> uh, of course, it's not possible to it's not possible anymore to kind of pursue something like that. But yeah, it is possible if you know it's possible if you know Richard Branson. Yeah, right? and then they can try SpaceX and <laughs> yeah, maybe fly with them. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can volunteer. Yeah, who or who else? Um... Either Richard Branson or uh, I forget the other, I forget the other guy's name. Um, I also like him too. The, the the guy, the Tesla guy, and the PayPal uh, yeah, and all see, that. Uh, Elon yeah, Musk. Uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Yeah. yeah. So he has his space program too. So you know, you give him a couple hundred grand and you're set, man. You know, you go <laughs> <Yeah>. into <laughs> just for a few hours. Like... <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a few a few minutes, I think, actually. Yeah, just go minutes. there for a few minutes yeah. and like, oh, yeah. okay, we're back. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm curious, what um, you know, talking about your art. No, I'm I'm a fan of your I love your illustrations. Um, what what influences you? What what um, what gets you going? You know, when when you're creating this stuff. I mean, obviously, you have to you have to um, for a lot of client work, they ask you for a specific thing, or they give you maybe an editorial piece, right? And you sort of have to work around that, but I mean, just your your style. What what uh, what is it that influences you? I think for for in terms of the style, I quite have a lot of influences in terms of how how I define it. There's a lot of like local national artists who I grew up with. I mean, I mean, who I grew up looking uh, and being inspired by their work, and some of their contemporaries. And it's just a lot of uh, just a lot of styles and forms that I like and I kind of put them together into into like a mix of anything and sometimes the style I mean it's a bit consistent but it varies from time to time. I, I try to add new things like for my more of my recent 
uh, illustrations, I actually added some new stuff like new kind of textures or patterns that I I saw and scanned just to just to try something new. And the thing with style is it's convenient in a way that when client gets you, you can uh, do it in your own style and you just have to think about the the subject or the idea. But for me, I just wanted to try something new, add something new, and if it works, kind of move forward that way. So. I guess if you look at some of my work before and now, it kind of changes. There's, there are big changes and small changes, but just trying to try new things. Because it can be actually a bit restricting for, your, for an illustrator. I mean, it's it's both good and bad. It's good because you 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 get work for your, your own style, but it can be sort of quote-unquote bad because you're kind of restricted to that. And it's also the reason why I like doing design work because design work is not is not too tied on a particular style, but it's more of what what client needs and what answers the brief of the client. So just two things I like doing because one is a bit more, I mean, not bound by style, but bound by solutions, and the other one is they get preferred style, so it's convenient and you can do it on yourself uh, by yourself and on your own. So yeah, it's mo mostly that. I guess I, I I do a lot of for my everyday thing. I actually rarely go to like design or blog sites, it's, it's super rare. I mostly go to websites that are unrelated, like you know, uh, science websites, wired tech websites, gaming websites, and you know, paleo future, kind of like a, a retro future stuff, and Flickr, and, and rarely about design. It's, I like looking at, because it, at, in my feed, I guess I see most of the design work of my friends to either Facebook or Instagram, and I guess that's enough for me to sort of be inspired. And the thing with looking at works of my friend, it's it's good because you get inspired. It's bad because you kind of want to push yourself more and be better. And it's 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 like that. So you don't spend any time on dribble then? I, Nothing like that. I mean, not, not, to be honest, not really. I just usually log in on dribble to upload. My stuff, oh, okay. but I really work. I really look at works of other people, and sometimes I feel bad because, uh, for example, some people follow me, and then it's like after a week, I just check and they followed, and I like their work, and it's sort of late when I kind of like or heart their posts, so, posts, so. it's just too late. I mean, I like looking at Dribble, but sometimes it, I just, I guess it's I only log into Dribble maybe twice or thrice a week, not 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 every day. It's just. It's just sometimes, just I guess my time spent either on working or reading stuff, and I read a lot of, I mean, a lot of things. So. Awesome. We'll talk about what you what kind of stuff you're reading in a bit, but um, you know, let's 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 shift it a little bit right now. Um, so you have your design company, mm -hmm. uh, Plus Sixty Three, and uh, what what initiated that? Uh, well, <clears throat> even before I got into illustration, I. I after college, I went into I went to advertising. But before I went to advertising, back in university, I was doing a lot of design work. Cause my first my first love in college was actually film and shooting films and short films and film, not digital. But then it wasn't sustainable because it was too expensive to shoot something. I mean, uh, shooting in thirty five millimeter or sixty millimeter is very expensive. And right now it's even better because you can. It's very democratized. You can shoot using a DSLR, but before it was too expensive, so I had to find other things to do, like doing design and illustrating. So, But then after that, you need to look for a job here in the Philippines that I guess that will that you'll earn from. So advertising was like the, the best option, so I went into advertising, and then when I was in advertising, I, I was there for like three, three years, and then I decided to with other friends, we decided to start our own design studio. I mean, it's different from now. It was, it was a different studio. We we operated for like five years, and then at at that time, I started doing illustrations again. And this it was around that time that I got, I started getting client and getting featured and for my really ugly works. But I don't know, people kind of liked it. So, did you get any clients from uh, from your previous advertising uh, job? To your new uh, job, or was uh, it something where you had to go out and, and search for? No, it was not really. It was different because um, 
it was a small studio, and most of the clients that we get were really small clients. So, and the advertising agencies kind of get big clients, and the advertising agency was in was a bit big. So, yeah, it was totally different client base, and uh, most of the stuff we're doing were, I thought at that time were nice, but a few kind of look back and uh, really crappy work. But I guess <laughs> that's how everyone starts. Yeah, you have yeah. to start some, from somewhere. So design, yeah. So design is something I like doing even before an illustration. So, like what I said earlier, it goes hand in hand because it's it's based on solutions and you can work with a group of people, not just by yourself. You can work by yourself, but yeah. Yeah. What is it that you like about design? Is it the the problem solving, or is it more yeah, the? Because uh, I, I mean, solving. like I said, I I love your illustrations. I mean, you do you do some great work, but it, it seems like it seems like you're more into the uh, solving the problem. Yeah, design yeah. is. I guess for design, it's it's that aspect. It's like the problem solving part, and for illustrations, a bit different because supposedly the problem solving part has been solved already by the agency or design studio that gets me or the art director. So. What I do is kind of help them uh, visualize or make their solutions come to life through illustration. So I guess as an illustrator, that's that's where I where I'm coming from. But if you're the designer, you get to undergo through the whole design process and finding solutions, researching, and do the, doing the actual work. So yeah. awesome. So you're, you're, okay, you you started your your company uh, plus sixty three, and you said you just had a couple of small clients what sort of thing did you do to to start growing your client base and and start getting even more clients in in the door yeah so when we started it wasn't actually plus 63 it was different names so ideals and it we started we we operated for like five years and after five years we kind of all the members kind of uh separated but me and three of my other partners we started our own so it's plus 63 because it's the country code of the Philippines and ah. bef even before then I I had a blog called plus 63 also what what I did was kind of feature local designers and creatives on the website so just so we have a repository for local creatives when people try looking for a job or people to hire they can go to the website and look at the portfolio or the links of the people on their website but yeah when when we started with with my previous design studio, it, it was really hard. It was mostly through word of mouth or referrals from friends and really small clients. And it started that way. I guess after doing that for like five years, we kind of, uh, the other clients became more familiar with our work. And then eventually we started getting big clients. And for Plus 63, when we started, most of the clients that we're getting is it's a good mix of like really big clients and mix of small startups so it's it's a nice mix of of both and i think the getting the good clients kind of became uh like an uh, a product of me also because when i was doing illustration work i started getting big clients and this sort of give you some reputation that okay he works with big clients and he can do bigger projects even if it's not related and i mean exactly, yeah. i think i think some people think if you're a good illustrator you are a good designer but it's totally different disciplines but I guess because you're in the same it's like a creative field in general it, because you've worked with with big clients as an illustrator it means it doesn't automatically mean you can do good work as a designer for big clients as well but I guess it worked for us worked for me in that way so yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's also fun even if it's like even if it's you saying you know <laughs> I worked for Coke, but I was passing around Coke bottles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of like that. It was like, a oh, bit, you work for bit, Coke. Yeah. You work at yeah. Coke. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we want you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Man. That's yeah, that's definitely it, though. That's that's very true. Yeah. Where, you know, it's sure. it's sort of in the same uh, category, you could say. You know, illustration and design. You know, they could go hand in hand. So people say, hey, you did this uh, this client work for. This big company, go ahead and build my website. You know, even though it's something yeah. completely different, yeah. right? And, it's, and it totally works, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. leveraging, leveraging that. Yeah. So you're doing, you're yeah, uh, Dan. So, um, so can you tell us about a time when uh, something 
didn't go right? You know, I ask this question a lot, and I ask it in so many different ways. But <laughs> can you can you t- talk to us about a, a time you had a challenge, uh, maybe with a client, maybe in um, in design, illustration? Uh, what happened, and uh, and how did it all get solved afterwards? Well, I think this would be a bit more design related because for illustration, even if there are challenges, it it can be straightforward in a way because they have everything in place like for example if they want to let you make a game on animation they have all the boards and the flow so what what I do in illustration is actually just kind of realize it visually so there's really not much of a problem illustration side of things but on design you get a lot of those because I guess we had this recent project for a, a coffee shop and for, for some, after having worked for like how many years, I, I've become too familiar with like identifying bad clients, good clients. So when I see bad client, I kind of know, ah, okay, so this is going to be bad. So I might just jack up the price so they don't get get us. If they do, if they do get us, at least you get you earn a lot from it. Or <laughs> just I don't know, just totally tell tell a client they're busy or something like that. But for this one, because it's coffee and it's something I'm very passionate about and something. I'm, I really like so I was really blinded and even my studio mates were telling me Dan it's a bad client and you said it yourself and it's like no this is this could be good I mean this is this is going to be awesome yeah um anyway so what happened was we presented different ideas and different designs and how many times it it was like they they agreed and they approved and then after approving it and signing it off it was like you know what my friend said it's not going to work he doesn't like this part so you have to redo everything so, like, so this what? is after no. you've already you've already done you already finished yeah yeah it's after everything's finished so like no we've agreed to something like this and something like that so we have to redo the whole thing again and i was pretty pissed to be honest but the thing is when things have i when things like this happen I always try to see something good out of it, and when I was reviewing everything, I was like, "Okay, so the client, the, the the comment of his friend was really bad, but after looking at everything we've done, I was like, yeah, maybe this was crappy work, and I guess it can be a blessing in disguise that we can redo the whole thing and make it a bit more better. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, and it 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 well for me, it became a bit better in terms of how we we did the whole thing. So. It can be, I mean, I was really pissed in the beginning, but at the end, I was, I was satisfied everything happened. So, yeah, it's usually like that. So did they wind up keeping the, the work or? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we finished the work for them and it was okay. We, we, we resolved everything and for, for things, for projects, and if something like that happens, I'm, very, I'm usually direct into telling them that, no, it's not going to happen. No, you're wrong. And this is why you're wrong. And I have to explain everything. And, and for me, it's okay, and I personally thought at that time I was on the right, and maybe I was I was right, but it was also good that it kind of happened, so we were able to revise a, a kind of almost crappy work to something a bit more, a bit nicer, I guess. So, so what was the what was the moral of that of the, of that episode? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure, but I guess the moral is if you think it's a bad client, you shouldn't just should trust your instinct. Don't, I think don't for just most, ignore it. <laughs> yeah, don't just ignore it. I think for, for designers especially and illustrators, especially those that have been doing it for how many years, you kind of have that kind of instinct if you know, that you'd know if it's a, a good or bad client. And I think you should follow that instinct. And for me, I, I actually knew about it, but I was just blinded with the potential of the project. So kind of like, I like coffee and it's going to be <laughs> nice. But yeah, I was wrong. So what if... What if- what if I'm a new designer and there's a coffee shop approaching me for a job and they're obviously a really bad, like they're not, you know, they're all over the place. They don't even know what they want, but they're offering me to, to, to do work for them. What would you recommend for that uh, design? That first, uh, you know, this is, let's say this is my first big job, you know? But, but are they paying you? Yeah, they're paying you, right? And they're paying you. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think? I mean, should, should a designer sort of experience that or turn away from it? I don't know. If it was me, I'd still get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good coffee then, Dan. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess it's coffee. And, I mean, it's cafe. I don't know. For me, if you're a designer, even if you're an illustrator, if you if you're doing work for cafes, it it has something. It it has. I don't know. It's appealing to me, like doing something for coffee cafes or restaurants. I mean, if 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 it's a bad restaurant or if it's not a nice restaurant, then I guess you can say no. But if it's a nice place and the coffee is good and the ambiance is good and the potential is, I mean, there's a big potential for a nice project. Yeah, I think me, I'll still get it again, even if I suffer all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Just jack yeah. up the price. Yeah, no, not tw- not twice, three times now. Uh-huh. Yeah. You have to go three Four. times now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, you uh, you just started a Skillshare class. Mm, um, yeah. What uh, what got you interested in, in doing that? Well, for Skillshare, it was it was different because they emailed me and they yeah they oh, okay. they asked me to to start a class and. At first, I was, to be honest, I was a bit skeptical because, I mean, it's hard to teach. I, I've taught in university, but it's different because Skillshare is, I don't know, it's on online only, and you have to, uh, uh, record you have to pre-record video. everything. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a lot of work, but it's fun work. But yeah, and the other thing is, I, I'm not a, I'm not a native English speaker, so I don't know if they understand me when I when I give the class or. I mean, for me, it was hey man, a bit I understand tedious. You. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and for me, it was a bit tedious because when I say something and when I re- when I play it again and I say, shit, what was what was I saying? I mean, I, I don't, I didn't understand what I was saying. I mean, in my mind, I can kind of understood it, but when I was listening to it, it's, I have to redo it. So it was a lot of work for oh, me. Man. I, I don't know if I'm going to make another school share class, but I, I I had fun doing it, and it was I enjoyed doing it. You did a lot of takes. Yeah, I did a lot of takes. So, so many takes. You sound All like right. me. I have to start <laughs> like the. You have to start every every episode. And, you know, you heard me. I messed up a couple times yeah. already. And you know, I'm like, hey, I'm. Uh, what's my name? <laughs> <laughs> so, I totally understand, man. Yeah, but are you thinking about teaching uh, anymore, or um, is this something that you see yourself continuing to do? Uh, maybe not just with Skillshare, but uh, you know, teaching courses, maybe online. In person, online, in person is easier, I guess. Because I mean, more you're, hands on. You're face to face. Yeah, you're face to face. You're more hands on, and you can. I mean, nothing is, I don't know, lost in translation. And if they don't understand you, you can explain yourself again. I mean, whereas if it's online, if it's like pre-recorded, it's it's hard. But yeah, I I, I used to teach in in the university where I graduated from and I taught for like I guess two or three years it was fun I guess the good thing about teaching is if you're with young kids uh, it's very I guess you keep yourself young in terms of how you come up with ideas and keep yourself updated with what things are uh, what things are going on with the youth and young people so and of course a lot of students are really good and they have really nice ideas so you kind of it's very infectious they're youthful uh, their youth. Yeah, so it's fun. That's awesome. Dan, what are your favorite tools to get your work done? Um, let's just stay, let's stay, let's stay out of like design software because you know, everyone knows about design software, order, but like any special tools? Uh, not computer related? Or- no, 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 computer related. Yeah, yeah. Computer related, but yeah. do you have uh, any special tools that really help you out with maybe your workflow? Um, your your running uh, your your studio. Yeah, I usually just work in front of a laptop, so it's very mobile. I think the good thing about laptops is you can work from elsewhere, and I do I do travel a lot. Sometimes I travel without client knowing it, so I can just lug my laptop and go somewhere else and work and work remotely. And when I'm in the studio, I work with a a tablet and uh, an Intuos, a Wacom Intuos. And then in the studio, I have a, another monitor um, just so I can put other stuff there and then kind of do the work here. And if there are revisions, I can read it on the other monitor. It's also the reason why I look I look here sometimes. That's what I do too, man. Uh, yeah. I'm looking over here. <laughs> so, <laughs> for questions and all the stuff, they're all on the left side. So for work, it's mostly here in front. And what about What about software? 
software is mostly Adobe, Photoshop, and Illustrator. It's just the two things I use. And yeah, just mostly it, I guess. And Evernote, yeah. Evernote, Evernote. for notes. And Writer, uh, IA Writer for writing ideas down and writing. Because I, I sometimes write, write like stories and brief and like rationale for projects. So I use IA Writer for writing. Skype for talking to you and other people, <laughs> <laughs> and Dropbox for uploading stuff. And you mentioned you mentioned reading reading books. Do you have any books that you recommend for designers? Uh, the, well, the, the the book that I recommend for everyone is uh, "Design as Art" by Bruno Monari. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I'll just type it here. Design as Art. It's a very nice book. I think Bruno Manari is very, it's multidisciplined. He is an artist, he's an industrial designer, he's a graphic designer. He made films and he made sculptures and he writes really well. And, and most of the things in the book are essays of him. So it's a very nice book. It's a good read. And it's, it's a small book. It's a penguin book. And it's, you can read it, I think, for like how many hours and just sticking to it and it'd be inspired. Awesome, awesome. And everyone, I'll have that on the show notes and pencil versus pixel.com forward slash Dan Matutina. Is, am I pronouncing it right, Dan? Yeah, I think you're pronouncing it right. Okay, in I a hope Western I am. kind of way. <laughs> Dan Matutina. So, so yeah. pencil versus pixel.com, that's pencil vs pixel.com forward slash Dan Matutina. Dan, before we wrap it up today, uh, do you have one last piece of advice to designers, to um, even uh, folks that would like to start their own design studio, their own uh, design shop, what would it be? I guess it's like you should take risks in, in everything you do. And for me, it was different because I worked in advertising before and it was a job that kind of paid well. and. When I was there for three years, I was earning okay, but when I started doing my own thing, I kind of left everything and earned nothing in like six months. So my parents didn't like it, but I just thought uh, if I if I stay and do nothing about the thing that I wanted to do, I might regret it later on. So I just did it, and I was regretting it for like five months, six months, because I used up all my savings and earned nothing. And so it was really hard, but I guess at the end, it kind of, kind of worked well for me and I think it will it will work well for everyone and the thing with taking risks and and doing something stupid as what I did was is you get motivated to be successful and try to be successful because I mean you have no choice and you have to do everything right and do everything uh, to be successful and of course have fun I mean it's very important I mean being motivated is one thing but having fun is another and even if you're motivated and if you don't have fun in the work that you're doing, it will show in the output or it will show the final work. Love it, love it. So Dan, where can we find you online? Uh, yeah, so you can go to my website at twistedfort.me, it's dot .me, yeah, and plus63.com for our studio. And everyone, I'll have that again in the show notes on pencilversuspixel.com forward slash Dan Matutina. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for taking the time and uh, chatting with sure, us today. It was fun talking to you. Yeah. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And, uh, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye.